We all want to make better decisions from deciding which job to pick to which partner to spend our lives with. Certain decisions have a big impact on the trajectory of our lives. But without the proper frameworks to reflect and decide, we can end up making choices that are short-sighted and irrational. Scientists and philosophers who contemplate decision making think they have an answer for this. They call it the multi-attribute optimization chart or decision making balance sheet. The idea is that you list out all the elements that make up a decision, assign an importance to them and then rate your different options for each element. In this video we're going to go through how you can use this framework to make better choices. Hey guys, how's it going? For those that are new to the channel, my name's Tom. I make videos on productivity, decision making and Notion. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, bang subscribe and you'll be notified when I release new videos. Now today is going to be a very practical one. We're going to be going through the decision balance sheet and a framework that I've put together on Notion. You can follow along by using the template, which I'll pin in the comments. So let's get into it. So the first thing you'll notice in this uh, decision-making balance sheet template is this cool quote from Benjamin Franklin. Now, he was a really big proponent of the pro and con list and using that to make decisions. What he would do is write out in the pros list all the items for the decision and the cons list all of the things against. But I don't think this is the best way uh, to go around making decisions really because it doesn't assign a weight to each of the different pros and cons. And also it's quite limited in that it only can be for one option, whereas this framework helps us compare multiple different options with multiple different elements. So just a quick overview of what this framework is, it's basically taking this Benjamin Franklin's pro and con list and moving it a step forward um, by assigning rate weights to each element of a decision that we might make. And it's really useful for making big life decisions. This isn't something that you're gonna to wanna to be using for a shopping list or deciding what trainers to buy. This is more about things like choosing where you might want to live or choosing which career um, you might go down. Now the worksheet itself is split out into two steps. Um, the first step is listing out the key elements of the decision and the second one is actually assigning weights to them and deciding. Now when it comes to listing out the key elements, we use the example here of say you're comparing two different job options. Now what you want to do is think about, okay, when I'm making this decision, what are all of the different factors that come into play? So it might be things like location, pay, holiday, career progression. These are all things that subconsciously or not come into your decision when you think about creating or starting a new job or whatever it might be. Now I also like to, when I'm uh, putting uh, these different elements down, put a really brief description about why this is important to me. So for example, with location for a new job, I might be very conscious that I don't want to be more than 30 minutes away because I don't want to be commuting. I might also say, you know, regarding pay, like money isn't everything, but I want to be able to live comfortably. It's important, I think, to write down these brief descriptions because it really helps anchor you and it really helps to sort of get your mind in the right place for when you come to assigning weights to each of these elements. Um, so yeah, just basically in this step, write down all the elements that make up your decision and just put a brief description about why that element is or isn't important to you. Now, in the next step, we're actually going to come to listing out those elements into a table and assigning a weight to them. So if we look at this example here, we've got the two different options for a job. So you've got Google and you've got Stripe. Uh, you'd probably be in quite a fortunate position if you can choose between uh, working at these two companies. But then what we want to do is just add in the different elements that you've created from the step before and then assign an importance to them. And this is a, a one to 10 scale. So for example, you might say, right, well, location is really important to me. I'm gonna give that a six, and so is excitement for the role. I'm gonna give that a 10. I know I need to be excited for the role. Uh, but the benefits, you know, what they might offer, maybe at Google, it's a, a slippy slide down to the cafeteria or, uh, you know, unlimited cereal, whatever it might be. That's only a two, so I'm gonna weight that slightly lower. Then once you've decided on these, you can move to adding numbers into each of the different options. So let's say, for example, Google are paying really well, I'd give them a 10. Stripe aren't paying so well, I'm giving them a six. And then what happens is this formula here basically calculates the importance that you've put in times by the weight that you've given, the rating, sorry, that you've given to the option. So this will obviously be five times 10, 50. Uh, and then it just sums them all together so you get an output at the end. 
Now, this is something that I think should be worked on over a number of days. I wouldn't necessarily advise just like sitting down with this and saying, mm, yeah, okay, this is roughly what I think. What you want to do is put in your rough ideas and then as the sort of ideas in your head and as the importance and you know you start to sort of mull over the different options, then start to update it. So you might say, for example, at the start, think, right, okay, uh, pay, um, you know, it's it's sort of important, but it's only a five. I'm not really that bothered about it. But then as you go through the week, you're like, man, I've started this side project and it's really taking up a lot of cash. It would be good if I could earn a bit more money so I could fund that. I'm going to go back into this decision making and put pay up to an eight and then see how that then affects the overall total. Likewise, you might see something like, for example, a new uh, the recruiters got back to you about some difference in the role and then you might want to update the excitement from the role like maybe Google goes down to say a four because they've given you some new information about the role which you didn't know before so this thing is definitely not set in stone it should be like a, a living breathing uh, you know table for you to update data as and when it comes and then after this you're going to be obviously having this um, output here which is telling you the total for each of the different elements that you've um, put in times by how you've rated each of the options. So here we've got Google coming out on top of 264 versus 230. Now we're not on algorithm, we don't have to sort of blindly uh, follow whatever uh, number is the highest that comes out of the balance sheet. How I like to use this is more as one tool to inform uh, my decision making process rather than just the be all and end all of whatever number is higher, that's the decision I'm gonna go down. And I'd recommend you doing the same as well. You know, if I went through this whole exercise and it turned out that you know Google was weighing heavy Heavier than Stripe, but like deep in my gut, for some reason, I just felt like Stripe was the right option. I would probably rely on that more than these numbers. Um, but obviously, it's up to you how you incorporate this into your decision making process. And I just hope that it's a, a helpful tool for you, however, you decide to do that. Now, the final step of this is actually to just clarify in your mind the result. And again, going back to this idea that this isn't something that you should necessarily work through in an hour um, and never look at it again. This can be an organic process over a few days. But once in your head you've clarified the decision that you want to make, I think it can be really useful to just write down that you're committing to that decision and mention the pros and the cons of both approach. So in this example, um, you know, you might say if you look at the scores that, okay, I commit to um, taking the job at Google because they pay substantially better and I have massive respect for the company, which are two scores that outweigh uh, Stripe. What you might also want to add is something like, okay, the career progression for Google is lower. Um, so you might say something like, I accept that my career progression may be slower and I think it's really important to capture this con as well because then when you're a year down the line and you know you're living out the result of this decision and something's not quite going your right way you can always reflect back on this and say well okay you know I made that decision it was mine to make and I knew that these were going to be the consequences and it's just quite a good I think way to reflect on decisions that you've made. So yeah, I hope you found that helpful. Um, if you like that video, I'm gonna leave a playlist here of other decision-making models and mental models that I put together for you to check out. But most importantly, enjoy the rest of your day.